coming up next on Button to Christ Ministries. Every time I spoke to Lee, three times I remember spoke to him while he was out there. So I said, if you don't leave me alone, they're going to kill you. I can leave what I'm in now. And if you don't leave me alone, mom, they're going to kill you. I said, who's there? You and Mr. Mohammed? I can leave you alone because I'm, I don't have the guts to face the judgment when it comes, you have to be obedient. You have to walk away. You say, I can't walk away no more. Anyway, what I do, I have to tell the police what I know, this child is in trouble. And this is was my greatest fear. Stay tuned. I'm Patrick Baker from the Button to Christ Ministry, The Divine Rescue. I'm here with an amazing woman who has been on the mountaintop, in the valley, in the miry clay, and God is able to deliver her. You have to hear her story. I'm going to carry you through a definite situation here. Number one, no one has heard her story. They have heard Lee Boyd, Boyd Malvo's story. They have heard Mohammed's story. They have heard the media story. They have heard America's story. They have heard the victim's story. But no one had heard Yuna James' story, the mother of the serial killer who is crying out for help, broken. I was doing a program in way down in St. Elizabeth, Jamaica. When she walked into my program as a mother, crying out and said, I need help. I need to be rescued. And that's part of this ministry, reaching out and rescuing soul for Christ. I want to let you know, I had the opportunity of sitting down and speaking with her. And it's not about her story. According to what I'm seeing, it's about the victim. Because my son could have been there, murdered. I want to tell you that 10 people were murdered by this serial killer and three injured. I want to carry you to walk with me through her life and what is happening to this mother behind the scene. I'm here as an individual, and I want to be on both sides of the fence to just get a glimpse of how a mother, when you found out that your son is a serial killer and have devastated lives in America, what about the victims? Journey with me as we join with Yuna James, Lee Boyd Malva's mother that DC sniper. Let's talk to Yuna James. So here with me is Sister Yuna James, and we're going to just walk through her life, her situation, what she was actually going through and feeling during this crisis. And I have to call it a crisis because the family is under attack. And this ministry is a family help network. So we are reaching out to her and we are reaching out also to the victims. Let us talk to Sister Yuna James. We just want to welcome you, Sister Yuna James, to the Divine Rescue. We are happy to have you. How are you doing? I'm, I'm fine. You're uh, fine? Yes, I'm fine. And I'm here giving God thanks for tonight. Amen. And for this moment in time. For this moment. Moment in time. Praise God. So um, I read about your story, yes. your son's story. Yes, sir. So we just want to confirm you are Lee Boyd Malvo, otherwise known as what? Una James. Una James. Yes, sir. You are the mom. Yes. Okay. So could you tell us a little bit, where are you from originally? Where were you brought up? I was brought up on, out in the rural area of Jamaica, which is in the parish of St. Elizabeth. 
Saint Elizabeth. Yes, Saint Saint Elizabeth. Okay, and are you a Christian? Yes, I am. And you were you brought up in the church, a Christian, all your life? Yes, I brought up as a Seventh Day Adventist, and my parents are Seventh Day Adventists. So, okay. Your background is Seventh-day Adventist. Yes, sir. What about your upbringing in terms of your, your family unit? Was your mom and dad there for you? Would you say you grew up in a stable home? Well, I grew up in Seventh-day Adventist. My mom and dad always go to church together until the separation between my mother and my father. So then, there was a break in the family there. Yes, sir. There was a separation. Yes. And how did that change your life as a young person? How old were you at that time? Between six to seven years old. Six to seven years old. Yes. I notice you are not speaking up that much because you're, you've been pressed down. Mm -hmm. And I know you, you came to the program when we are praying for you. Yes. So we want you to boost up your spirit. Mm -hmm. I know you're down in the valley, you're down in the gutter, but God oh, is able, yes. sister. And that's why you came to this program. Yes. We're doing a program, you came out and says, I need help. Yes. You're going through something. Yes. So I know you're in the valley, but God is able. Yes. So you grew up in a, a home that was broken. Yes. And then tell me a little bit about your relationship with your son's father. And that is Lee Boyd Malvo. What's his father, his biological father name? He's Leslie Malvo. His Leslie father? Malvo. Yes. And what was your relationship in terms of, you know, was it good? Was it average? What do you think? Well, living with Leslie Malvo's, Malvo at the time was an abusive relationship. So it's an abusive relationship. Yes. So how did it got started? He pursue you, you pursue him. What happened in the beginning? How did you get hooked up? Oh, well, I met him when I was much younger. And uh, um, we were hooked up somewhere along the line, hooked up relationship. And um, as it goes further and deeper in the whole uh, introduction of my life to Malvo's life, we'll get there, but it was then abusive home. So An abusive home. Yes, I had to separate. Myself. So you separate when your son was born. How old was your son? Five years old. Five years old. Yes. And how did that impact your son, you think? Was he close to his dad? Was he yearning that I want to see my dad? What happened during that time of brokenness. So there was brokenness in your home, yes. and then you hooked up with uh, your son's dad, and yes. there was brokenness again. Yes. How were you feeling at that time? What was your life like in terms of were you depressed? What was happening? Well, you, being a single parent now, move out from his father's home. I'm on my own with the Malvos. Malvo at the time, one, as life used to be, one, I was grow poor, but I wanted something out of life, ambitious too. Okay. Um, so, after being single and move on to another relationship, was engaged in a broken relationship again, then I decided to be on my own now and continue with Malvo, and then I start traveling. Start traveling. Okay, okay. So, so could you slow down a little bit? Yes. So you broke up with um, your son's dad yes. and you move on to a different relationship. Yes. And then it did not last. No. And then you decided to you're going to travel. travel yes. And how old than... was Lee Boyd Malvo at that time? He, he was 10 years old. So he was 10 years old at that time. Yes. And then you migrated. Where did you go? I go to a small island, St. Martin. St. Martin. Yes. So you went there. You took your son to start a new life there. I did not took him with me to St. Martin. Oh, you did not? No. 
So he was left in Jamaica. He was here in Jamaica. And who was his guardian? Who was he staying with? Well, he was bored with a friend of mine. So he was bored yes. with in, a friend. In Kingston here with in a friend Kingston. of mine. Yes. And then you went on to St. Martin. Yes. And how soon did you... You brought him to St. Martin. No. No. And what happened then? While I was in St. Martin... He wrote me when we, con we communicated. communicated to letters, and one of his letters is that he's not happy where he was at. Mm -hmm. He was moved from school where he was attending, and he was attending the school at Barbican. And with that, that didn't affect him much, but he, he said they were... In the letter, he told me he's not happy, and they 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 were beating him, mm -hmm. and there was situation that he wasn't accustomed to, as he said, that he was facing, and it's hard. So what I did, I called, tried to get contact with the father, and asked him to keep him like home abroad, and he'd best it be with a parent instead of being with. People who is not his family, best for the child to be with a parent. He said he didn't want the mother. He refused to take him. So I had to left him with a friend. Okay, so if yeah. I could put myself in Lee Boyd Malvo's life at age 10. Yes. He's coming from a broken home. Mm -hmm. His dad don't want him. No. His mother migrated and left him. Yes. And I could imagine, because we work with a lot of different families. Yes. And that's part of the brokenness that we have seen. Mm -hmm. Where mothers or fathers migrating and mm -hmm. leaving their children yeah, back behind, home. Behind. And then they are abused yes. and taken advantage of. Yes. I want to tell mothers who are watching this program yeah. that I've done hundreds of cases around the world. Yes. And this is one of the biggest situation and problem we have seen mm -hmm. where when the parents is gone yes. loneliness sadness yes. uh, yes. nobody loves me yes. i am abandoned mm -hmm. uh, you know all the brokenness and this will drive thoughts of suicide mm -hmm. uh, not being wanted yes. rejection yes. pain and and this mother is telling me right now that she went away yes. searching for better life yes. and i want to tell you a lot of people if they decided, I'm not going to seek better life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay with, with my, my family yeah, here yeah. and eat nothing, yeah, eat yeah, dirt. Yeah, yeah. It will work out better. better. Because that young individual, yeah. they just seen you leaving and yeah. they're abundant and cut out. Yeah. So your son probably was going through a lot of things right now. Yeah. Uh, all the different changes within his life. Yeah. And I'm just telling you because I'm here to defend the victim. Yeah. And I'm just letting you know that. But yeah. I'm just trying to see into his young life what was happening. Yeah. So now you're over there now in St. Martin. Mm -hmm. And what was the next move? Well, the first year I was there, when his father said that he didn't want to keep him, he refused to have him, so I had him come to St. Martin, 95, to me, for the summer. And for the summer, 95, it was hard for me to come home because to take care of myself, take care of Lee, Without not earning here, it was difficult. So I'd call my sister up to keep him. Okay, I got to get it clear here again. I'd remove him from Barbican and place him with my sister in Brownstone. So you moved him from where he was staying with friends yes. and you now place him with your sister. Yes. And you're still in St. Martin. Yes. And so that was about, what, three, two, three years? No. Five years? That was... 95 summer. 95 summer summer 95. summer 95 okay and then what happened then he's living with your sister yes he was there with my sister and then what's the next move where did you you stayed in st martin what did you do i was in st martin i work we agreed that how much i could afford to send monthly for him i send what i have to send and it's the same problem i had again 
I was told in his letter the situation, what, what was happening, and I came home without no one knew I was coming home. And I went there. He was at school that day when I went there. And due to situate and situation, when he came home, and I, when I went there the evening, my sister was, the day my sister was at work, she had gone to work and I was there to waiting on her until she come home and I was there. Well, everything wasn't the best as I could say, but once he was around with a family, at the time I think that was the best thing for him. But what was going down and what was going down, as he said in one of his mail to me, that he was abused in that situation also. So I was encouraged by a friend not to leave him there. So yes, Lee was moved from there to Tracy, to a best friend of mine that we were living at one yard at Oakland Road. She was at Tracy, and that's the year that he had passed his common entrance for your castle also. So I said, everything would be best for transportation instead of a travel from Gibraltar out, he would be in Brownstone era where it would be reached to school and time and everything should be good for so, him. So if I may stop you there, so yes. he is uprooted again. Yes. So you could count the amount of times this he young moved, man moved, moved in his young life. Uprooted, mm -hmm. rejected by his father, mm -hmm. rejected by his mom, mm -hmm. without saying it you know, out loud. Mm -hmm. She's trying her best, mm -hmm. but he's seen it as rejection. rejection. And now moving with his aunt mm -hmm. rejection mm -hmm. and now moving with another person yes. mercy mm -hmm. this is pure rejection so um malvo was moving from home to home to home so many times and that alone create brokenness different homes different situation you know a child 10 11 12 years old that's a child so um Tell us now, you are still living in Anti no, Saint Martin. In Saint Martin. Yes. And then what happened? Did you stay there? Did you move? You said you came back home, and you came back home, and the situation wasn't pretty when you came back home. What's your? Well, I had him in Tracy. But what I had, I had in mind for the summer. I would give him a trip and let him come up and then I come back down with him for him to prepare for school. Did you do it or you had it in mind? Well, when I sent and asked her to send him up, his ticket is online, send him up. She said to me in, in um. That's your friend? Yes, I have okay. to come and get him because he's not, he's not obedient. So he was given some trouble. He was yes. disobedient. Yes. And that's the result of changing homes, being abused, thinking that I am nobody loves me. Mm -hmm. My parents is not there. My dad don't want me. My mom is gone. Mm -hmm. It's typical. So what happened then? Mm. What happened after that time? He has to still continue school or I have to come home. Mm. It would be harder for him. He would go to high school because I have to earn to take care of him in school and yes. also take care of myself. Okay. So I had looked around and I had bored him with the boarding, the boarding home for the school, the orchestra. Okay. That's what had happened. He was more, it was, he was bored with the Robinsons family, if you don't want to call their name, let's edit it out. So he was bored with a family then? The boarded home. At the boarded mm -hmm. home. Right. So you that. change him from that friend mm -hmm. and you board him in the school hoping he will pick up and he will do better. Yeah. Did that work out for you and him? Same problem Mr. Robinson says he's not keeping him the other year because he's not obedient. He's not obedient. So he was troubled then. And what happened? We want to get to the main part of the story. So. You did you come home again? Are you what happened? I I came home after came home. Yes. 
I have to come home. And I think I'll go back to Sonia and beg her again, keep him. And she had have him back. So you took him back from the boarding school back to a friend. So yes. that's about same, seven times. Same friend. Same, same friend. friend. So that's about seven times yes. he's moved. Mm -hmm. And now I want to fast forward to Antigua. Mm -hmm. At that time you went to Antigua. When did you go to Antigua? After I went to Antigua is no because remember you know when he left there because he put it in his book say he was disobedient because when he disobedient I would have to come home and take care of him so wherever I left him when he doesn't obedient, then they wouldn't want to keep him, so I have to come home and take okay, care of him. Okay, so here is a child crying out for help then. Mm -hmm. So he purposely then being obedient, disobedient, yes. so that mom will come home and, and take, take care, care of him. Mm -hmm. So he was crying out for help then. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking? Did, didn't you thought then I may just quit everything mm -hmm. and take care of my son? What was going through your head as a mother? I came home and I talked to him. I begged him. I said, well, that's a kid. Yes. You begged him. Yes, to understand. If I come home, I can't take care of you. See, I come home now from America and it's hard for me to survive now here. Okay, so you tell him then you can't come home because you have no means of making ends meet. No, his father don't want him. No, his father father don't want he's not him. supporting him. He he's said, not supporting what him. What his word was to me when I asked him to assist me, catch man and mine him. Okay, so in other words, go find a next man to mine, to, mine to, him, mine him. to take care of him. That's what his father okay, told Okay, so him. his dad wasn't really there. No. He's not being wanted. He's a single parent. I have to find the means. So you were struggling as a mother yes. then, and you decided, I, I, he's crying out for help. Yes. I can't come home. But if I were to ask you, if you were to rethink your life, yes. wouldn't you have come home and forget everything? <laughs> That's a very hard no, one. No, you see, this is for mothers mm -hmm. who are watching. Yes. Because sometimes mothers make some decision, mm -hmm. and some people chose men, some mm -hmm. mothers, mm -hmm. over their own children, mm -hmm. and then it results in devastation. My, so, my case was the man over Malvo. My case was for earning and take care of both of us and that I can take care of myself, plus Malvo in school. Okay, but I asked you a question mm -hmm. that you didn't answer. What it is? If you were to restart my your life, life over, yes. wouldn't you come home and say, I'm not it? sure, because I came home from 2002 in Jamaica here now, and I'm suffering. Okay, but when you look at the impact of his life and what it done to your life, Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have you recap and say, no, I would have come home if I had another opportunity. You really see what has happened? The rebellion part of Malvo, that's what makes the situation worse for him to have to be moving up and down and up and down. It's not that where he is, they are not taking care of him enough. He okay, just, so, so do you, are you fail to understand that he mm -hmm. was lonely? and he wants somebody in his life, his mom or dad. Are you saying he is responsible at that time? Well, Didn't you notice that he was crying out? He's not being obedient because of the pain he's going through. I didn't see it so at that time. So you're saying that if you were home, you couldn't manage him then? Mm -hmm. He was out of control? Means. The means for taking care of him in school would be hard. I'm in St. Elizabeth. Once I tried to get um, transfer for him on the St. Elizabeth side, where if I'm at home, I could help myself. I didn't have it for him to travel back and forward from St. Elizabeth to York Castle each day. So well, since he was there with my sister and passed for that side, it's best to keep him in school there. Wow. So um, this become more serious now because 
I'm saying if it's me and my son crying out, I'm, if I had to do it over, I'm dropping everything. You know, mm-hmm. I'm dropping everything and coming home, whether mm-hmm. I eat or not, because I've done some cases mm-hmm. where homes are broken mm-hmm. and, and children become drug addict mm-hmm. from brokenness in the home. And yeah. some mothers wish I had the opportunity not to go abroad and make money, mm-hmm. but stay home and eat dirt. Mm-hmm to grow their children right and to be there because love in the home is more powerful. Love in the home, Christ in the home is more powerful. The, the two bread fruit you have mm-hmm. to eat if you ever beg it mm-hmm. with your son mm-hmm. and your daughter and their home. Mm-hmm. You know how many mothers migrated and, 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 and their daughter or their son was raped and they become different things in life, their whole life destroyed? many cases I've interviewed. So we're going to move on with the story, but we may come back to this because this is not settled. Because I don't think we, we, we connect right with this, that yet. But we got to think about that story. Because I know you're broken and what you have been through. But when you look at how many times this young man moved, and you said it with your own lips, mm-hmm. that he was creating all of these scenes to get your attention. That's what he said in that book. Yeah, because he didn't say it out. He was able to verbalize it and to say it now Mm -hmm. because he's carrying that pain Mm -hmm. that he was carrying of loneliness, sadness. I'm sure if I interview him, Mm -hmm. he was suicidal many times. Wish that he don't live. Yes, once when I came home, he told me he's going to hang himself. And what I had to do was Lord see, have mercy. see counseling from him, talk to him. I didn't come home because I was coming home to nothing. To nothing. So you choose something over your son? It's not that I choose something over him. If I don't work, how am I going to take care of us? Well, you you walk into a prayer meeting I was doing, so it meant that you believe in God, don't you? Yes. Well, God will take care of your need. <laughs> you see what had happened? Yeah. And what I was afraid of, when I was with my mom, my mm-hmm. father weren't taking a care of me also, and I was to go to the hard way to go to school or stop from school. Mm-hmm. And in order to stop from school, in order not to stop from school, I have to go out there and work at machete and chop the grass and work like a workman out there in the field, in the garden, one month out of every week to maintain myself for school. So I know the danger. So you see what happened. One brokenness lead to the next brokenness. You have been through a lot yourself. So I knew, was afraid coming home and can't maintain myself. And so that's where we're, we're, we're getting and somewhere now then. Because you are carrying a pain and you didn't want it to happen. You want to be the provider. There's one choice I had, which I didn't do, was just to take him and leave him with his father and move on. And I didn't want to make that choice. Because I know he would be end up in a worse position. For his father is a gambler. He's never at home. Mercy. So it goes back to the home, ladies and gentlemen, that the home is broken. Sister so Yuna is carrying a lot of pain. His father was never at home. From him reach home and he ate, shower, he's on the street gambling till whatever moon, whatever time he decided to come home in the three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. So if I decide to leave Malva with his father and move on, what life would Malvo have? Mercy. Mercy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, so we it's have to give and take. Mercy. Mercy. Okay. We want to move on from there. I got the point now that Sister Yuna was broken herself and she did not want it to happen to her son. So she was sticking out to say, I want to be the provider. I want to help her. As hard as it may seem, it's like a generational curse where she is coming from a brokenness and her son, she's pre- trying to prevent it from happening. You know, so I get the picture now. You know, I was struggling to get your picture, sister, but mm-hmm. I got it now. I got it. 
I got it. Praise God. So, tell us when you moved to Antigua. When I do move to Antigua, he was saying that he doesn't have any parent. He's always by himself. How old was he at that time? Twelve? Mm. He was around 13. 13? Yes. Okay. So I took him, I leave from St. Martin to Antigua where I could have paperwork in the island. Yes. Where he could leave to go to school and I would pay for both of us permits to be together. Until a Jamaican lady introduced Mohammed to me in paperwork to go to America. That okay, is. could I just stop you there for a minute? So what she's saying, ladies and gentlemen, she moved to Antigua mm -hmm. for a better life mm -hmm. and she brought up her son, Lee Boyd Malvo, with her. Mm -hmm. And imagine then all these years of moving around and brokenness mm -hmm. and now you join your mother mm -hmm. and now you have to be obedient mm -hmm. and live a life that you're not used to. Mm -hmm. So your mom gonna tell you what to do now and to send you to school. That's hard, I'm telling you. I'm just painting a picture and I'm, I'm not here to defend you and I told you that from day one. Mm -hmm. I'm here to defend the victim. Mm -hmm. But what I see with Malvo is brokenness. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, you as a single mother was trying. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of single mothers watching mm -hmm. that are trying. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of lessons through this. Mm -hmm. And we have interviewed a lot of people. And you have to pick the lessons through this mm -hmm. that is going to teach you something. Mm -hmm. So that tragedies and things like this don't happen. Mm -hmm. And when there's signs going up, mothers and fathers will see the signs and react. Act. Don't wait until it's too late. So... Here you are now, he's going to school in Antigua, and you mm -hmm. said you're trying to reach to the Big Apple, mm -hmm. the U.S., mm -hmm. where you can make more money, where things can be better. As everybody around the world is thinking about the Big Apple, how do I get there? So you met Mohammed. Somebody introduced him. Somebody introduced you to Mohammed. Yes. Is Mohammed a Jamaican? No, he was an American. He's an American? Mm -hmm. And he's living in Antigua. Yes. You know, I always puzzled. I thought he was a Jamaican. Yeah. So, Mohammed is an Antiguan. Was he converted to Muslim or did he have a different name from what you learned, Evo, after? I know he was John Williams. John Williams. Yes. And then he was converted to Muslim. I don't know what have happened with conversion. What I know, he was still smuggling people into the United States. And they had caught him. So in order for him to continue and able to travel, he had changed his name. So he has changed his name. Yes. So he had changed his name to Mohammed. Mohammed. Okay. Uh -huh. To Mohammed, yes. Okay, so he changed his name then to Mohammed. Yes. And here it is, somebody yeah. introduced you to him, yeah. and he said he can do your paperwork, yeah. you and your son, yeah. and get you to America. Yes. For a fee. Yes, he charged. He charged. Mm -hmm. So he is so-called have his office, you visited him, and he showed you, say he can do your paperwork and get you and your son into America. So you started the process. Yes. And did you identify, was he a little bit strange, anything you seen that you didn't like while communing and doing the paperwork? No. He was upfront and everything looked genuine and honest? No. What I know is not me alone. He was doing at the time and it's not. I alone are the first set of person he was doing it, as the lady had told me. There are other people he had gave them paperwork, I bought paperwork from him to America. So therefore, in my case, he was introduced, he told you what he'll do and what his price is at and when he can get his job done I see. and take it, get it to the United States. 
Okay, so he planned all of this yes. and he worked on the paperwork yeah. and from my study, he got to your paperwork. Yes. And you migrated to U.S. And which state did you go to again? Was it Washington? Fort Myers, Florida. Florida. You went to Florida. Yes. And where was Lee Malvo at that time? In St. Martin. In St. Martin. So you left him again. How old was he at this time? 14? Yes. He was 14 years old. And when you left this time, mm -hmm. who was he staying with? I won't call him, but he was with somebody I was along with. He was left with Mr. Mohammed. So we want to make that clear here. Mm -hmm. He wasn't left with Mr. Mr. Mohammed. Mr. Mohammed. No. The media put it out there that he was left with Mr. Mohammed. He was and okay. So matter of fact, the media said was he was left by on his own. Okay, no. so he's fourteen years old. The media side says yes. he was left on his own. Yes. One side said he was left yes. with with Mr. Mohammed. He was left on his own, and Mr. Mohammed took him over. I was left with Mr. Mohammed. They okay, who with. was he left with? A friend then. Yes. If he was left with a friend, mm -hmm. how do we know you are telling the truth? Well, Malva knew it, and he's not supposed to lie for me. Okay, so you're saying Malva knows it. Yes. So how come the media don't know? What do you think? Well, the whole story, if you read, if you follow it up the case with the media, and... You have family says too, you have the people who they meet and get the story from says, but the reality, yeah. the truth of this story is what I have gone through and what Lee have gone through. People okay. will say things to the story yes. for fame yeah. and for other means. Right. But I went through it because it was my life and it was my pain. Amen. It was issues Amen. that I have to go through in order to survive, order to live. So it does make sense that if I lie on it now, it won't help me. What helped me is giving the truth. Amen. There's no and, more and answer from the truth. And that's all we're here to do. You want to tell your side. You want to tell the truth. So yes. you said you, you migrated to the U.S., yes. to Florida, mm -hmm. and your son was left with a friend. Yes. And... How did Malvo get his paper then? Malvo's paperwork was was done by Mohammed. Mr. Mohammed to take him to America. So there was a communication when you're gone. With continuous with Continuous. So he was communing because and working on his paperwork. Malvo was introduced to Mr. Mohammed by me, saying that this kid is going to come to him for paperwork to take him to America to me but never been left that this bonding should be continued. Okay, so he created a bond then from your estimation. Yes. And he started to commune with him. Yes. Were they living close proximity where he could walk? No. But if he goes to town, goes to school at the Antigua Seventh-day Adventist School, it would be in town where near to where Mohammed was. So he was even going to a Christian school, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Antigua Seventh-day Adventist school in yes, town. Yes. He was attending. Yes. And now Mohammed was building a relationship with him. Yes. Now the paperwork was finished and your son decided he's going to come. So he was now Not about decided. 15. decided. He didn't decide. What happened then? What had happened is that Mr. Mohammed couldn't get him in America earlier on the time because he had problem with the government smuggling people both in Antigua and from his side of America to the United States and what I've understood that he was locked up in Miami for some months. Yeah. So Lee had left to where I had left him to go and take care of Mr. Mohammed kids and were going to school. Wow. Wow, that's a, a big story. So, um, Mr. Mohammed mm -hmm. moved to the States. He was locked up in the jail. He was moved to the States. Uh, he, he was, was 
smuggling people and the government find out immigration found out and they locked, locked him up in antigua in miami in antigua one of the time yes in antigua and then mm -hmm. communication his children have nobody to take care of them yeah. so malvo malvo went leave. there to help he took his mouth and tell me that when he came to america that he my money that i was sent for him because even though i were here in pharma i had still sending his money every month yes I know he wasn't in Jamaica. Yes. So I was still sending him his money, and there was a phone number I had. The gentleman told me when I called him up, Malvo told him I'm sending him back to Jamaica. So what he knew, he's supposed to go to Jamaica, because that's what Malvo told him. But he stopped go to the Adventist school and went wherever Mr. Mohammed had hidden himself. Yeah. and taking care of Mohammed children with the money that I was sending to him in Antigua. So we want to make sure it's clear. So you are sending money to your son. Just the same. And the son was taking care of Mohammed, Mohammed children, children with your money and you did not know no. and not going to not school. Not at the time. Not at the time. I know, the time I know he were not going to school because I used to communicate with the school and he was not in school. I don't know where he was at in Antigua at the time too. So how did he get to America? So Mohammed came out from being locked up. Yes, that's and he the went time. right back to do that what is he was the time doing. I know he knew the name Mohammed. Yeah. I we had the name before I didn't know, but I know him as John Williams. John Williams. Yes. So you didn't know his name yeah, is Mohammed. Mohammed. But what wow. I had no dear for now. That's the time I'm getting the name Mohammed. Yes. And he called me up and said to me. I must send down the money now, Western Union and the money for him to bring in Lee. Yeah. Which came to one year after. Yeah. And he took him in. I sent the money to him. And when he reached to America, I should give him the rest. Yes. So I Western Union and the money, he took Malvo into America. Okay, so he kept his word by taking his son one year after yes. into America. Yes. But he was building a relationship with your son yes. within that year and you didn't know. Right. I know I ask you this question and I ask you if you think Mohammed was homosexual. No, I don't know. You don't know. Mm -mm. Anyway, I had to ask that question because he built such a powerful what, bond. What, what had happened? People asked me the same question and I was told that. That he was? That he and Mohammed had a relationship. What I knew, wow. the last letter that I've got from him, the other day, he put it in his letter that yes, it is. And I've listened yes. to the interview that he said yes, it was. You see, from my um, experience going around, for somebody to brainwash somebody at that magnitude, mm -hmm. there has to be a brokenness, a relationship, and a control issue. Because all the different brokenness within the homes mm -hmm. is gearing up to a, a different life, a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So that's why I ask you that question. So now he's in America with you. Mm -hmm. And what happened then? He came to your house to live with you. He came to my house. But when he came to America, when he came, he didn't bring any gears. When you say gears, you mean He didn't no bring clothing. no clothing. Okay. He just came with Mr. Mohammed and Mr. Mohammed's son. Yes. But when I said, well, go buy the truck and bring in your gears, bring yeah. in your clothes. He said, I don't bring no clothes. I'm not staying with you, Mom. Really? No. So what had happened? Mohammed only took him by me to let me know that he had took him to America. Mercy. So he's already brainwashed and, and ready. So, so how long did he stay with you then, at that moment? They came there the Saturday night and they went back the Sunday morning and I went to work, I'm very unhappy. So, that Saturday night, the Sunday morning I went and there was a pay phone and I called up Mohammed and I said, let me tell you something. 
if you don't return Lee by me six o'clock this evening, he's not with me. I am going straight to the police because that's my child. Yeah. And you can take him to America to me and then you go back with him. Yes. I don't know where under the heavens that could work. But I am giving you till six o'clock. Lee must be where I am at. He said, I have no choice. Yes. And he said to me that he soon called me back. And he called me back and said to me, go and pick up Lee at the Greyhound station at Fort Myers bus station. Fort six Myers? Six That's a, a six famous o'clock. bus station. Six o'clock. Yes. So Lee came back. Mm-hmm. And he was living with me, comfortable, still in communication with Mr. Mohammed. The later part, without my knowledge, hiding and communicating of the payphone that was down outside by the... So there was a ban, so he's yes. forced to communicate, he's hiding and communicating, yes. something was going on. Yes. That's what I understand, even though I tell him, leave him alone. Whatever, whatever. Now we reach to America, we are together. Whatever, whatever. When he reached 16 years old, one night I came from work. When I came in, his duffel bag was packed by the door. And I asked, what is this? He said, Mom, you are growing me like a girl around here and I want to go and live the life of a real man. It's time for me to go. Mercy. Don't you know under the age of 16, in America, if I don't want to live with you, mom, the state of America bought me, mom. So he said. So he was told that. Yeah. Yes. And he's ready to go. I spoke to him that night and said, till I am hoarse. Use my money if you get the ground bus. And he went to. To Mohammed. Yes, Bellingham to where Mohammed at. So was Mohammed living with his family or his children at that time? From he, had, he had his children that he had smuggled out of Antigua, to Antigua, America to Antigua in hiding the kids. And from Antigua back to America, he had them in Washington State. So when he took back Malvo, from America was with his kids too and come to America. So when Malvo leave Florida, he went to him at the Bell at Bellingham also in Washington State where where when he went there, there the government had took back the kids from him. So the government took the kids from Yes him. and he had um lose his parental rights to the kids. And, the, and his kids were given to his wife? Or? Yes, given back to his wife. So he was carrying anger, yes, revenge, yes, yes. and all this pain he was carrying. Mm-hmm. His kids are taken away. From him. Okay. And then he's living with him. Mm-hmm. And then something happened that changes many lives forever. Mm-hmm. They had some court case between him and the wife and when he loses parental rights then Malvo was with me at that time I didn't know what was going on on Mr. Mohammed's side because I didn't have any communication with Mr. Mohammed but I guess he had a communication with Lee so you meant that so, he came back then who came back no you said he moved in with him and then you said the kids were taken from Mohammed yes of, did Malvo of, come back to your house again that was you're not understanding oh that was okay okay i got it now what had happened mohammed took back his kids to america yeah with different names yeah so i don't know how the government was known by the kids that what had happened and they found out that their name that they're having, they are not the right name, yeah. and what was happening, what was happening between them and their mom and dad. So they was taken from him oh. and was placed back with their parents, and it was a court battle, and he had lost the case, mm-hmm. and the rights to see his children. Mm-hmm. So that's where the real demons of Mr. Mohammed came out and started. Okay, so now 
you get a broken man, Mr. Muhammad. You get a broken young man, Lee Boyd Malvo, mm -hmm. teaming up together, hopelessness, hurt, pain, rejection, as what we're seeing in many homes. All these things are happening. And then they decide, they plot to do one of the most evil, destructive, indespicable. Words cannot describe what happened. So as a mother, when you heard the news of a serial killer in Washington, I know it's hard for you to retake and recapture, but when that news came that a serial killer was out, did it ever go across your mind, what if? No, I know they were out there killing people. And when I went Before to, the Washington shooting, you suspect that something was not right? Yes. Malva told me that Mr. Mohammed was a hitman. Was a hitman? Yes, when I got there, when I left Florida and went there, and the police had turned him over back to me that night before he go, Mr. Mohammed take him back and gone the following day after. Okay, we want to get that clear. I know you're speaking fast the Jamaican language. We want the viewers to get it clear. She's saying that um, the police had taken her son back to her from, mm -hmm. from Mohammed. Mm -hmm. And the next day, mm -hmm. Mohammed came okay. and took him again. Mm -hmm. So it was a battle because he, he had a plan in mind mm -hmm. and he wanted to execute the plan. Yes. So he came back and took him. Mm -hmm. And during the process, Mm -hmm. Your son told you that Mohammed is a hitman. Yes. And what did you do as a mother? I went back to the police station. You went to the police station? In Bellingham and told them Bellingham. the following day that what I think had happened. Malva too, I didn't say Malva first. I explained to them that I'm afraid that Mr. Mohammed is a hitman and is killing people. And... I'm afraid he's using Malvo also with himself to kill people. Okay. So they asked me how I know, and I said, it's Malvo who told me? Yes. And it's dangerous. Yes. They are in trouble because when I went to Florida, to Bellingham, sorry, I didn't know my way around, and the number that Mr. Mohammed gave me, I called it up. And when I do call up the number, another person answered the phone and I told them who I am and why I'm there. And they had gave, it was the mission house in Bellingham and they put on the manager on the phone. I explained who I am, why I'm there, whatever. And Reverend Archer came to the bus station and picked me up and we both talked and he said, you have to go to the police station because they are there with me and I'm observing something strange with the two, this man and this child. Yes. And he said, Malvo can talk. Whenever he talks, he just give him the eye. And yes. that's, that's shut up Malvo. So he said to me, something is very strange, no, n noticing how they are moving and observe, observing them. So he took me to the Bellingham police station. I reported it. He told them too that he's afraid of what he observed Mr. Mohammed might be doing. Well, they didn't pay it any attention. But I told them that Mr. Mohammed is killing people. And my greatest fear, he might be using Lee Boyd Malvo to kill others too. Mercy. So no action didn't take on it. I was homeless for that year that they were killing people and telling them, even sick, going to the hospital. When I speak to the psychologist, they say whatever. I say I'm not I am not mad, nothing is wrong, but my child is out there in trouble and I can't go home. I can't do nothing because he's out there in trouble and I need help to get him away from Mr. Mohammed. But what is happening now? They did not help. And Mr. Mohammed used him and killed people. 
So what is happening now? They said, I am the negligent mother and I love what is to be done, done. But when I realized that Malba was in danger, after I spoke to Mr. Mohammed on the phone in Washington State, that he needs to send Malva to me a month and some days after. And he said to me, when I finish away with him, I'll give him back to you then and hang up the phone on me. I said, this time wow. was in problem. And that's what that forced me to go out there from Florida to go and see if I could retrieve him and talk to him, that he understand the danger that he's putting himself in. And anyway, every time I spoke to Lee, three times I remember I spoke to him, while he was out there, my son said, if you don't leave me alone, they're going to kill you. I can leave what I'm in now. And if you don't leave me alone, mom, they're going to kill you. I said, who's there? You and Mr. Mohammed? I can leave you alone. Because I'm, I don't have the guts to face the judgment when it comes. You have to be obedient. You have to walk away. Mm -hmm. Say, I can't walk away now, mom. Anyway, what I do, I have to tell the police what I know. This child is in trouble. And this is, was my greatest fear. At the time, I was the person who was haunt. Mm -hmm. Wow. I am the person. My, at the time, I was a fear mother and haunted. Mm -hmm. Just like how they were saying, the Beltway sniper that haunt the America people. Before then, I was the one who was haunted in pain because the fear that I have for what would took place, that is what is took place now. The exact thing that yes. you're fearful of. Yes, yes. And you were trying to speak out and yes. nobody's listening Nobody to Nobody listened to me. Mercy. So when this thing do happen now, I went in passion of anger, shock, because I'm saying I'm telling them, but nobody listen. I tell people who I am, where I'm in the shelter. I was homeless for one year. I was in the shelter. And I told them this child is in trouble, and that's why I'm out here. Because I can't go back nowhere leaving. So when this thing happened, hmm. the, my pain was I'm telling them, and they wait, wait until it's happened. So what do I do now? You're full of anger because you, you didn't want it to happen. You are trying to help, but you didn't get any help. So you becomes a failure, a failure to your own child. Well, that's really shocking that you try to sound the alarm and yes. nobody listen. No. And you got to wonder how many mothers are out there sounding the alarm and nobody's listening. Nobody's listening. Did you blame yourself or you blame the authority? I blame myself in a sense, because this is why I, at the time when it happened, I didn't know how to deal with it. I went in a shock. Yeah. I came home and I had to went straight for counseling. I was depressed. I couldn't speak out to the victim's family at the time. I was a victim also. Malva was a victim. The victim family out there suffering. Malva is suffering because I was telling them before that this child is out there suffering with Mr. Mohammed. I became a victim because Malvo and Mr. Mohammed came to shoot me out in Washington State one Saturday night. So Malvo came with Mohammed to, to shoot, shoot you? Yes, How because you know that they came to shoot you? Because whenever I see him with Mr. Mohammed, I was seeking help of the police. So Lee yell to me, if you won't leave me alone and keep calling the police, they're going to kill you. I say, who is they? Mm -hmm. I keep always asking, who is they? Yeah, Mr. Mohammed, you only have to kill me because I'm fearful of what is happening mm -hmm. and I can't leave you alone. So that night that I had seen them, I was in Russell Park's home at the time. And that Saturday morning, I got up, I said, I wouldn't go to church. I would stay home because I'm tired. And the spirit bids in me to go on the road. 
So bidding me, bidding me, the was busy me to go on the road. I said, all right, I go to. Can you keep the things in America name again? The storage. Yeah. I don't have anywhere good to go, but since I not well, um my things at the storage and I didn't been there for a while, let me go and see what is happening there. And when I go, I went to the storage. Heading to the storage. I went from the country, came, catch the bus to take the the highway bus that go down in the tunnel. When I took the bus, I sat up here so in the seat beside the driver. And when the bus taking the straight road to the tunnel, the spirit said to me, get up from here and go over there. When I go on that side and sit and look back in the bus, I saw Mr. Mohammed and Malvo sitting in one side and side together. And my anger goes same time. So they were trailing you, think? No, they were in the bus. Yeah. They were coming from where they were coming from, and I took the bus that they were in. Mm -hmm. But when I move from that side and go over there and sit and look back, look down in the bus, and saw them, Mohammed said to me first, "Hi, sis." I say, "Hi, this and that, that, that." I'm a pick the way I use a killer of people. Me I talk about. Yeah. When you leave my child alone and I start the talking, mm -hmm. and he's, he came off the bus at the first stop in the tunnel, and I run to grab Lee, and I hold on to him, he pulled his winter coat down in my hand, and I try to hold on to him to talk to him, say, Mom, don't you ever dare do that, Mom. Mm -hmm. And when, I, when fear took me over, let him go and shiver and he run. I say, you're not running from me with your mother. You're running to your grave. That man is going to kill you. You're running to death. Mm -hmm. Wow. You're running to your death. And then I walked them down, tried to find him. That shot the morning and I didn't saw them. And I went to the storage afterward. And coming from the storage, when I was in the bus, just as I saw it going to before twilight. This we said to me, you know, Mohammed and Lee is going to kill you tonight. They're in the bus. I didn't have to turn around like that. You look straight in the mirror. Because it's tinted. And you see who is at the back of the bus. When I did like this, Malvo was about three seat behind me. And Malvo, Mohammed was, Mr. Mohammed was at the back of the bus. And when I saw them, I said, then, what am I going to do? So we said, ring off the bus and get off. When I get off the bus, this inner man said, this priest said to me again, stand up and look. They are going to get off at the next stop and get in very fast to you. And I stand up and I gaze, they get off up there and they're coming down in great speed. And I cry out to God, I say, God, my own belly pain is going to kill me. And when I start crying, I don't know if I run, if I fly, if I walk, what takes me to Russell Park's home that night, Saturday night, I don't know. But when I reached the gate, I realized I was at Russell Park's home. And a greater fear took over, and I looked quick if they were behind me, because I know they were there. And I didn't saw them, and I pressed the buzzer, and they opened the gate, and I went in. And when I went in, when I went in, that's when the fear was done, and I was feel a bit safe. And that's the last time I saw Malvo, and that's the last time I giving up going after them because I realized now they are going to kill me. They were trying to kill you because you are meddling. Yes. And he's already brainwashed. Right. So when you heard about the mass killing, yes. killing 10 people with so many injured. When you hear the killing and I'm telling them because the stage that he is in one of these book in. I saw him with his ear, raga rag and pull up, pull up. And he was smoking too. And you don't know him of that smoking no, no, and looking, no, having that no, look? No, no, So I walked behind him. And he was standing at a bus station in Seattle. That's after the killing? Before the killing. Before the killing, In the yeah. process at the time of the killing there. 
Every time he saw me, he run. He run. And sometimes I'll be running him down and begging him to listen. Yeah. But he wouldn't listen. It is the same time now I there I was facing depression also homelessness till I end up in Russell Park's home trying to because I can't move on from there because I know he's in danger. And I'm telling them that he's in danger, but nobody would listen. Nobody listens. So I I'm tell them Mr. Out, Muhammad was out there killing people too and nobody would listen. Okay, so when the killing took place and you got the news that it's your son involved and Mohammed, what happened to you at that moment? I was just in a shock because my greatest fear, my greatest fear come back to haunt me now. This is what I was afraid of and this is what happened now. He's a killer. Mercy. Wow. I wouldn't want to be in that shoes as a mother, as a parent, to hear what happened. So then let's turn a little bit to the victims because this is a gruesome killing mm -hmm. and I know you're here as a mother and I sympathize with you but as I said before I have to defend the victim mm -hmm. because they were going about their business mm -hmm. there's mothers affected sons mm -hmm. daughters parents, grandparents, the whole community of Washington was in mourning, mm -hmm. seeing innocent bystanders doing, going, doing their tasks were gunned down, cold-blooded murder. Mm -hmm. Lord of mercy. That stayed with me, and my heart is still beating when I think of the mothers whose child did not come home. Yes. The news is out. Mm -hmm. All of America is in shock. Yes. All the world is in shock with these serial killers yes. operating from this car, from the trunk. I can just remember like yesterday and my heart was bleeding. And here I am with Lee Boyd Malvo's mom speaking to her, hearing her side of the story and her brokenness and her pain that she has been carrying. Your son, only son, only son that you have given birth to. Imagine for a moment mm -hmm. what the mother was feeling. And I'm not here to paint a picture for anybody to sympathize and be sorry for her. I'm here to defend the victim but we cannot just overlook a mother's pain. When she warned the authority, she was pursuing her son that danger, and it actually happened. It happened again. Mercy. What do you have to say? I'm here well, with Sister Eunice James. What I'm saying now to the victim's family. So you want to speak to the victim? Yes. I want you to look right into the camera, and I want you to speak to the victim. Families have been changed. Yes. Brokenness. Lives changed forever. Yes. Lord of mercy. I felt like we should just do a moment of silence again. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Because that's like yesterday. And it could have been my son that was gunned down, who was doing his own thing. Lord of mercy. 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 I want you to look in the camera mm -hmm. and speak directly to the victim from a mother's perspective. What I am um, speaking to the victims and I sympathize with the family of America who had suffered under the hand of Mr. Muhammad, who used this child to hurt others. I was trying to let the government know that Mr. Mohammed is using Malvo to hurt, to kill people. But no one wouldn't believe me. The fear of me at the time, while this was happening, while Malvo was out there with Mr. Mohammed, is that he's going to use the child and kill people and put Malvo in trouble, and I'm going to be in trouble too, and I don't want this thing to happen. 
Because Malvo had told me when I first met him, when I get into Bellingham, that Mr. Mohammed is hitman. And he with Mr. Mohammed. In my mind, Mr. Mohammed can be using Malvo to kill people also. I tell the police, how do you know? I said, Malvo, tell me that. The child is in danger. Mohammed is out there killing people. So what is happening? I did not get any help. And the reality and my fear took over. So I'm ending up now full of anger and passion at the time. I couldn't deal with it because my anger is, I tell them and they wait until it happens. What do I do now? Does this thing help now? Therefore, people suffer, which I was praying that it would be dealt with, that nobody wouldn't get hurt. They are all hurt. And I'm giving my sympathy to it because I am praying that if assistance would have come in from the government that would have stopped the killing, people wouldn't get hurt. My son probably in danger wouldn't be out there with this man killing people, he wouldn't have got help, but nobody wouldn't believe. So therefore, you all are victims suffering right now. I can tell you that um, <laughs> what's the word to say now? Sorry, I sympathize, but life is lost. My son is lost. My son is also lost. My life is also lost. I am just a victim in pain, just like you. All those who suffer, whether families, people who don't even suffer, like you know, Pastor, going through the pain too. So it's a world cry of suffering. This is why I'm here. What I'm saying here, in this thing here, I am also a victim. Because this photograph is Mr. Malvo. And I'm being a single parent with this child, with Mr. Mal Mr. Malvo. Here, here is the other pictures. From this picture, being a single parent with Just Mr. Malvo right here. And this was where he's at in Antigua. This is where I left him. This is the child I know. Mercy. And when you look at him, you could see the pain still that is carrying. Well, this is the child I don't know. This police now. This is the child I knew. These are the child I knew. My son here. This is from starting out as a single parent. And being a single parent, this was Malva picture. And this was him in Antigua here in school. This is one of his school pictures in Antigua before we go to America. And this is also, where it is? This is so fine. But I guess your camera can pick it up. Both of us together as a single parent. And if I had these pictures with both of us going through suffering, I cannot always be wrong and I cannot be always be right. But what I'm asking, half of those story out there that I've dated Mohammed, I have this and I have that, is not true. I am not 100% Right, but I'm not all 100% wrong. Don't put back those head past the times. All two. This, these are the picture that I don't know. This is the one that when he, he was out there with Mr. Mohammed. And this is the other one with him in prison now. 
I don't know this side of this gentleman. I'm having the picture, this is my son. But knowing Malvo, the way I could say, or the little that I have known, is from this stage. This stage, I don't know. But I am the mother. I am the one who is in the pain. And this story is like a three-side shilling. So this three-side sh um, shilling now, story now, wouldn't be a shilling. It would be a United States um, quarter coin that has two sides. And the rolling side would make three sides. A side which is the world side, the, which the media, and people who give in their side of the story. You have the family side, which contains Mr. Malvo, Leslie Malvo, Lee Boyd Malvo, and I'm the mother. No, you have the story, which is the truth. That's the rolling side of the coin, the kind that makes the side that makes three. And what I'm asking here is for my side of the story to come out there that they can understand where I went wrong as a mother, that they can understand what did the media put out there? Was it all true? And they can get the whole true life story of Lee, Mal Lee Boyd Malvo. Right now I'm here in Jamaica and I'm here fully depressed because it is thrown at me as a murderer's mother daily here. How I sell out my son to Mr. Muhammad on many different occasions I'm, I was told, your wicked mother can you sell him out? I don't have any life. My whole integrity and life are mashed up because of this story. And all I'm asking, I need my side of the story to be out there also so the truth and nothing but the truth can, can what, sir? Nothing can stop the truth. Mm. The truth is the truth. Mm. And the other side of it is the power of forgiveness that you have taken from your mission with what's the name of the station? Button to Christ. Button to Christ to Jamaica for the power of forgiveness. Amen. And through the power of forgiveness, mm. I am here sitting tonight. Amen. And giving God thanks for your ministry. ministry, which can be here to assist us as families and of people at the universe who have to go on through pain like this and how can we get healing so we can go on living is by the word of God through the word of God and I'm giving God thanks for sending you here and the Holy Spirit allow us to meet and I can be here to air my side of the story and asking for some assistance to get my true side of the story out there also. So, sir, I'm giving God thanks and asking God thanks to bless your ministry so others' life can be blessed. And thanks for helping me to learn that I have to forgive Mr. Muhammad. And so that the victim's family also can forgive Mr. Muhammad and Lee Boyd Malvo, so that their life can get healing. So that therefore, even though they are living in pain, can God can help them to put their life together and rebuild a better life so they can go on living and live in two tribes, Christ Jesus, which will bring the comfort and the real healing that we both need in life to continue living, to go through this great, what's the word? Controversy that we have to live through. So I am asking for sympathy 
on the Malvo's side right now and that the story can be looked in and see where he was taken in by Mr. Muhammad and abused and I was out there begging for help that you people who suffer in America wouldn't be able to be going through this deal if they had listened to what I'm saying that Mr. Muhammad is using the child to kill people. So all I'm asking, sometimes when you speak out and you need assistance, it's for somebody to look into the situation and give some help. I don't say it wouldn't happen, but life would, so many lives wouldn't be gone. My life is all torn up and gone, but I am asking for sympathy. And I'm giving my sympathy and condolence to all the family who have got hurt because during the process of time that this thing had happened, I had came home and I was fully depressed and full of anger. I couldn't manage at that time. But thank God for the power of his healing and giving me the courage to be able to speak out. And this is my word to you all, the victim and the world. Family. Man, man. Well, you, you heard from a mother's heart, and I can't take that away from her. I told her I'm here to defend the victim, yes. but that's her story, yes. and that's her life, and she spoke from her heart. Yes. The final thing I want to say before we wrap up, I want to let you know that there's many books that have been written yes. about this story. This book here. Three weeks in October. Yes. Have you read this book? Yes. Is it true or lie? That book is true. Because, this book is true? Yes, because that had happened where they were out there killing people in America. Okay, so and that wrote, book is true they by the book of this, yes, A. Moose. They were the book what about of this story. book, Sniper, Inside the Hunt? They wrote, there's the same thing like that. They wrote it off. Okay, so this, that's What true. had happened in America. What about this one, 23 Days yes, of terror. terror. That haunt America. That's the wrote off the, what had so happened. So it's a true story. What yeah. about your son now? He wrote a book, actually, yes. and he studied to become, what, a lawyer in jail? That's what I've heard. You heard that he's yes. now a lawyer in jail, mm -hmm. and he wrote his own book. Have you read this book? Yes. Is it true or lie? Well, you have stories in there which is not straight truth. So it's, it's not 100% truth no, from what it's you twist, see. It's twisted. Well, if he had done such but, horrific crime, but, then but, it must be twisted. But it's twisted. You know? The story is twisted. Because there are stories that the person who helped him to write the book, they, which they came out and they get this catchy part of the story, people gave them story and they put it together and they put it in the book. Okay. One so it is a question. twisted story. It's twisted. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, you know, that's the media, that's what's yes, out there. It's a twisted final story, question. And that is where my life The final okay. question before we wrap up. Yes. Um, I know a lot of people, one of the reasons why, from my research and study from this um, case, yes. is that people fell from their heart that you had a relationship with Mr. Muhammad. Mr. Muhammad. Yes. That's what's out there in the media, that yes. you have a relationship. And because of that, he had that opportunity to, to tweak, tweak and yes. manipulate your son to becoming a serial killer murderer. What do you have to say out there? You are in Dominica? Antigua. Antigua well, sorry. I've met Antigua. Mr. Muhammad, and I did not have a relationship with Mr. Muhammad. I'm saying it loud and clearly. What I'd known, he was introduced to me as a man who has paperwork getting people to America. And I'd went to him for helping me to get to America, and that's what I did. I had no relationship with Mr. Muhammad, sir. Okay, well, I can only ask you, and you're here no. seated, showing and telling America your side. Yes. And you're saying you had no relationship, no relationship with, with Mr. Well, Muhammad. we have to take your words for it, because you are here 
you're willing to come forward. Yes. This is a, a, a family health network, but yes. to Christ ministry. Yes. And this department is the divine rescue. Yes. And we are here to support and to help you. And we are here also to represent the families that is hurting yes. and have gone through great pain. The family that is hurting, I said again, I am here hurting. We both are all victims in this crisis. And what I'm here, I'm asking for, if I can get some help, that I can get my side of the story out there and the whole world can understand my side of the story because I'm wrong in some case, but I can't wrong in our case. And that the truth can be told so there can be my own true art. And well, you know, we we'll appreciate you yes. coming on to this program. And, yes, sir. Uh, we're going to continue to pray for you. Um, while we pray for all those victims yes. whose life has been disturbed destroyed. and destroyed yes. forever, I could say, because it's, forever. it's never it's a been forever the same. pain. No, yeah, the it's pain. a forever pain for me, and it's a forever pain for them. Yes, yes, but as I said, I'm here to represent yes. the victim because my son could have been there. Yes. They were murdered. Yes. You know what I mean? I mean, we don't have Lee Boyd Mohammed here. Um, Mal was seated here no. because we could have asked him and find out what was going on in his head. Yes. But you, the mom, you were somewhere else. Yes. You weren't even there. No, I weren't but there. But you are right in the equation because you are the mom. Yes. But nevertheless, we just want to say thanks for joining us on this program. And we have been going to many homes and reaching out. And I just want to say praise God. You saw our program and we were at this church and you walked in, you sat there, I didn't know who you are, no. and you said, I need help. Yes, I need Depression. help. Depression. Yes. So, we're going to continue to keep you in prayer. Yes, sir. And God is going to do the rest. Yes. So, we appreciate you coming on this program. Thanks for having me. May God just bless you and yes, keep you. And I'm and looking miss. forward to God for his compassion and his mercy and both... You with the courage to go out there and continue to bless souls for the kingdom of Christ. I just want to do a prayer before we wrap up this program. Yes. Let's do a prayer. Father in heaven, great yes. God, we just want to thank you for the privilege, Lord, of just sitting down with your daughter who is broken. Yes. And Lord, we just want to remember the victims whose life has changed forever. Yes. I pray, O oh God, for the moms, the dads, the sisters, the aunt, the, the grandfathers, the cousins, mm -hmm. the, the, every relative that is connected to the victims yes. who have gone through great pain, even America and around the world, yes. who have gone through great pain from this serial killer. Mm, yes. But Lord, please remember his mother, yes. Sister Yuna James. Yes. Strengthen her, O oh God, also, and bless her and increase her faith and her strength. Yes. We thank you, O oh God, for all the viewers. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we just ask you to take charge now, I pray. Yes. In Jesus' name. Bless. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Again, I just want to say thank you for watching this edition of the Divine Rescue, I'm mm. Patrick Baker. Mm. Until then, stay strong and keep praying for us. God bless you until next time. Thanks. Thanks for watching this program. We hope that you were blessed. To further your support with us, please consider giving a donation at buttontochrist.com or .org. Any amount is appreciated and will be used for the continued growth of our ministry and the spreading of the gospel to the world. May God richly bless you and we'll see you next time.